And when a judge uh, alters the meaning of the words of the Constitution to affect a result the judge would like to see, is not the entire document weakened and all our liberties placed at greater risk? So the road ahead will not be easy. Again, the fight will be long, it will be tough, it will require strength and intellectual rigor to see it through, but it's a fight we can win. We will win. And it's a fight with which I'm proud to stand with you, shoulder to shoulder, every step of the way. Thank you so much. We have, uh, we have a few minutes before we move into our first plenary session. So the Senator has graciously agreed uh, to stay with us for a few more minutes and to take uh, questions. There are microphones on uh, the side aisles. Uh, if people who wish to uh, ask questions should, uh, should line up and then uh, the Senator will, will field them. While people are gathering, I would just want to say how much I appreciate the, the great team we have on the Judiciary Committee. We're outnumbered 12 to 7. That's a huge majority on a committee in the Senate. But you've got great constitutional lawyers uh, who've studied these issues like uh, Orrin Hatch and, and John Kyle and John Cornyn and Lindsey Graham. And then we've got uh, two non-lawyers in Chuck Grassley and, and Tom Coburn, who've got courage and insight from the real world. And I think it's a pretty good mix, and I was proud of them uh, and the work that they did in, I think, creating the kind of discussion we'd like to have with the American people on the Sotomayor nomination. Right. Question. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, Senator, notwithstanding the fact that the Obama administration hasn't uh, really uh, sent up a tremendous number of uh, nominations, particularly for the uh, courts of appeals, I understand there's a proposal uh, to pack the lower courts, so to speak, by enlarging the number of uh, both uh, appellate and uh, district court judges. Uh, where are those going uh, this year and next year? I think we need to question that very aggressively, the uh, expansion of the number of judges. Uh, my staff people give me these notes almost every day because uh, we get complaints about it. There are 21 uh, circuit court vacancies. There have been 11 nominations by the Obama administration. There are 75 district vacancies. Only 10 nominations have been submitted to the Senate. We've confirmed seven and you hear, you hear them whine and wail about how they're being held up. And we are, uh, so my view is if they've got a nominee that's not a good nominee, we're going to resist. And uh, if the nominee is, is one that's uh, capable of handling the uh, office and has got integrity and ability and is committed to following the law, whether they like it or not, then I think that nominee will, will be able to move forward. Uh, with regard to the expanded numbers, we had testimony that the uh, caseload of the federal court had increased district courts 27 percent since 1990. That, that sounded at first bad, and then I started thinking, well, that's not so bad. I would have thought it was a lot worse than that. And we also know that uh, um, the highest, almost, I think the highest caseload circuit is the 11th circuit, my circuit, um, Florida, Alabama, and Georgia, and that uh, they don't want any more judges. They said that they can handle this higher caseload, they can maintain collegiality and coherence as a circuit better, uh, and um, so I have real dubious, and of course federal judges have more clerks today, more computers, magistrates do more work, more cases are being pled, you know, 90 percent, 90 Seven, eight percent of criminal cases plead today and almost as high a number of civil, maybe, maybe that high. So I'm, I'm going to show me 
how you need a whole lot of judges. I'm sure some districts, you know, uh, probably are in, in a critical thing, and we'll need to look at it. I'm from Mississippi. I'm familiar with a no potential nominee from the President's Party for a district court vacancy who won't take the job because he can't afford the pay cut. Uh, is there any uh, appetite in this administration for improvement of judicial pay so that qualified people will take the job? No, there's not any appetite for that. <laughs> uh, the, 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 um, not from me. Um, uh, we got plenty of applications, it seems, when nominations come up. I'm kidding. I ask them, you know. I asked Judge Roberts uh, one final question. I, Judge, can you live on the pay? You know, don't take it if you can't. Uh, I was kind of kidding, but uh, of course, one, a month went and gone by and he was there asking for a pay raise <laughs> and uh, reminded me carefully, stated he didn't promise not to ask, uh, <laughs> and there's certainly uh, no rule against asking. I, I wish we could um, um, just give everybody what it, we'd like to give them, but we can't. I mean, the, the the deficit this country has this year, you, you know, remember Bush was attacked for uh, spending. His highest deficit was $450 billion. That was last year. This year, we just finished September 30th, $1.4 trillion, $1,400 billion deficit one year. The total debt last year of the country, public debt, the hardcore public debt that we owe outside people, was $5.7 trillion from the founding of the republic. Uh, in five years, according to CBO's score of President Obama's budget, and this does not include health care, uh, it would be $11.7 trillion, doubled, and will triple to $17 trillion in 10 years. I see the Brits have said, uh, the conservatives have said that they're going to freeze pay, you know, and uh, that kind of thing, but I... I uh, I think uh, we've never seen anything like this flood of debt. And all of us are going to have to ask ourselves uh, what we can do. And I think the government people are going to have to take some leadership role in containing what we do. But I, I understand, um, you know, what is, a, what is a baseball player who can hit 360 and 40 home runs get paid? I don't know. Um, Yes. Senator, could you comment, uh, talk a little bit about your views about the constitutionality of a federal mandate that every citizen of the United States purchase health care? And might uh, the upcoming debate in the Senate be a good opportunity to talk to the citizens about the Constitution as a limitation on the federal government's power? I think that's a good question. Matter of fact, I met with my staff. I think Brian Benchkowski is here. Where's Brian? Uh, my chief uh, staff uh, director on the Judiciary Committee, because he was uh, Attorney General McCasey's chief of staff and staff, staff director on the House Judiciary Committee and does, does a great job. But we were talking about, and you know what I said, Leonard? I said, we ought to ask Federalist Society folks what they think, too. You know, I said, let's think, begin to think about that question. And what is the constitutional thing? And, and um, so I think it's well worth looking at. Can the government require you to do uh, what we think is in your best interest if you don't think it's in your best interest? Uh, and and um, what interstate commerce? I don't know what connection. So it, it would be an interesting question to think about. And if any of you are aware of research on it, we'd love to hear it. Senator, as a prosecutor from North Carolina, I'm, I'm concerned about the changing makeup of the Fourth Circuit. And in light of that, what is Senator Leahy's current um, interpretation of the blue slip rule as, as it applies to circuit judges? Um, well, they were able to block four, and maintain four vacancies for a number of years. Judge Andre Davis, uh, as a prosecutor, uh, that went on the Fourth Circuit, just confirmed. I spoke about a series, I think five of his criminal cases that were not good, all reversed by the Fourth Circuit. And um, 
it bothered me a good bit. The more I studied it, the more bothered I was. 